You guys have been a little mad at me because it's been a little while, but got some barrel, got some leaf. You know what that means. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode. Yes, I know it's been a little while. I'm gonna try to do about one leaf and barrel episode a month. If I can squeeze more in than that, I'm going to. But with all the other stuff on the channel, I feel like maybe one, maybe two a month is where we're gonna end up landing with how many of these we do. But nevertheless, today is a leaf and barrel. This is on the main channel, so it is the barrel portion. If you're not familiar with what leaf and barrel is, is a segment I do on my channel where on the barrel portion, the first portion, we go over a whiskey or a spirit of some nature, generally usually a whiskey. And then on the leaf portion on my second channel, we go over the counterpart, the leaf, and see how the two pair and play together. By the way, shameless plug, new leaf and barrel shirts out on the website now. This is V2. Thank you to all you guys that ordered the first versions. You guys might have heard me talk about this on previous videos, but I was happy with the other shirts. The printing was good, the t-shirts were great, but, and I know it was a whole pandemic thing that was causing the shipping delays, but it really was just, the shipping was horrible because of all the stuff going on. So I partnered up with Bunker Branding. If you don't know who Bunker Branding is, that is Matt Demolition Ranch. That is his company. And we're doing using them for our merchandise, our apparel now. There's still pandemic going on in shipping time are still delayed everywhere but should be way way better than it was with the last shirt company and plus these are awesome and demolition ranch come on great guy anyway i did let the patreons vote that's how i've been planning my leaf and barrels on my patreon if you weren't aware i don't pump it a lot because i feel weird pumping patreon but i do have a patreon so if you're interested in contributing supporting what we do here on the channel i do have one of those i'll link below but one of the things i do on that is i put up some options uh, for people to vote on and then they vote on what is the next pairing we'll do on leaf and barrel and we put this up a little while ago this was the number one pick was the Michters, and I say Michters because I often say Mickners. I know that's not how you pronounce it. That's just the way it comes out of my mouth. I know it is Michters. Just to clarify, so I don't have a bunch of people tell me, you're saying Michters wrong. I know, I know, leave me alone. You know I have pronunciation problems. This is a big mouthful. Michters Toasted Barrel Finish Sour Mash Whiskey. This is a limited release from Michters. They only put this out once a year. So a lot of you guys may have a hard time finding it. If you do, I apologize for doing a video on a whiskey that you guys might not be able to uh, get, but this stuff is really nice. As you can tell, I've already drank a good bit of it. This is the toasted barrel finish of their Sour Mash. Now the Sour Mash is not a limited release. You can find the Sour Mash pretty readily. At least I have it all over my area, along with like their normal rye, their bourbon, their American whiskey. They also have a toasted barrel, barrel strength rye that is just, man, it's good. And I think they have a toasted barrel, barrel strength bourbon, I think. I don't know, they have a few of these toasted barrel versions. I love toasted barrel stuff. But before we go any further, let's go ahead and America. Let's get a pour of this so this thing can be breathing a little bit. I'm gonna get a decent little pour of that because I love this stuff. So they take their normal sour mash and then they barrel it a second time in a toasted barrel finish. The way Michter's describes it themselves, just to be thorough, because if we're nothing on this channel, we're thorough. It is made by taking Michter Sour Mash whiskey and then aging it for an additional period of time in a second custom made barrel. The second barrel is assembled from 18 month air dried wood and then toasted, but not charred. I think it might've been the Whiskey Vault or the Whiskey Tribe. I don't remember where they were talking about it, but I remember watching a whiskey video where they were talking about the difference between kiln drying barrels and letting them air dry. Supposedly you get a very different flavor profile if you let the barrels naturally air dry, but it takes much longer. So a lot of people kiln dry their barrels. But I thought that was interesting and in just how you dry the barrels can affect the flavor. And apparently it does. Several different levels of toast for the second barrel were evaluated before the production team led by master distiller Dan McKee and master of maturation Andrea Wilson decided on the one that would best display the elegant nuances of the remarkable whiskey. Normally when they age, and a lot of you guys might already know this, but just for guys that don't, normally when they put bourbon or whiskey in a barrel, it is a charred oak barrel. Toasting happens before char, so when you're 
putting the fire to the barrel first, it toasts the barrel. Imagine like a piece of toast, right? So lightly browns the barrel, brings out some sugary sweet flavors and goodness. And then you go past that to the char, which is what they normally do to barrels when um, they're aging bourbon and whiskeys and stuff. They take it out of the original barrel, put it in a toasted barrel. Sounds nice, a nice toasted barrel, which from what I understand brings out, like I said, some, uh, some of those nice sweeter notes. Let's get into the nose. Now I have my whiskey bobble here because I have sat with this and tasted it before. And I'm gonna reference that to see if what I'm getting matches up. Now, Michter's, by the way, I love Michter. Pretty much everything they make. I like their rye. I love the Michter's American whiskey. One of my favorites, recommend to a lot of people. This stuff is just for you guys that like this stuff. Batch number LT9H1251. And this stuff comes in at 86 proof or 43% alcohol by volume. Not very strong. 86 is kind of on the lower end of proof of the negative comments people have had on this. Most people enjoy it. They think it's a good flavor, but they wish it was a little stronger because 86 proof has been, you know, proofed down a good bit. Although uh, Michter's, if I remember correctly, has a pretty low entry proof. They don't have terribly high barrel proof stuff. And that stuff smells like candy. I mean, that stuff smells good. I'm getting some like fresh, like almost like a fresh apple, like a Granny Smith apple. Definitely some dark, like brown sugar, caramel, toffee kind of vibes. But there's like a freshness under that. You kind of get the like insane sweetness right up front. But under that, there's a little bit of a crisp, fresh, like kind of apple-y kind of vibe. Cinnamon, but not super cinnamon, more like maybe like a, a gingerbread kind of cinnamon. Definitely some vanilla and toffee. Sweet, sweet. Let's get a little. Man, that's sweet. It is good though. Right up front you get smacked with some sweetness. If I had to put a finger on what kind of sweetness, it's almost kind of like a, maybe a little bit of honey. Pretty decent texture, viscosity for such a low proof. Definitely get a little bit of a cinnamon vibe there, but the, the most upfront flavor I would say is like a honey caramel kind of sweetness. I'm still getting like a little bit of an apple vibe in there. Maybe that's crazy. I didn't write that down in my notes. So I didn't get it before, but there's like a, a crisp freshness to it along with the super caramel, sweet, maybe even toffee, vanilla. You kind of get where I'm going. Imagine that kind of, almost like a, kind of like a candy apple. I can actually kind of get that vibe, like a little bit of the crisp Granny Smith apple with some like caramel on top of it. On the finish, I'm definitely picking up a little bit of oak and it's just got a touch of like a um, paint thinner. <laughs> Right there in the back, there's a little bit of bitter. Yeah, it's kind of weird because you go through this kind of like little roller coaster of a lot of this like honey sweetness. Like I said, I get like a little bit of an apple kind of vibe going in there. Definitely get some like caramels and vanillas and, and all that super sugary, dark, sweet kind of flavors. Somewhere in the middle there, there's a little bit of like an astringent bitter, a little bit of dry. It's not horribly unpleasant, it's okay, but there's definitely a little bit of that in there considering how sweet this is, which some might actually like that because some might say that it balances out a little bit and doesn't make it overly sweet because there is a lot of the sweet flavors in there. There is right there in kind of the mid back, there's a little bit of like an astringent kind of dry note. It should be noted that this is whiskey and not bourbon, right? So this stuff is called Michter's Toasted Barrel Finish Sour Mash Whiskey. I don't really know 100% why it's called whiskey and not bourbon. I don't know if the sour mash process has something to do with it can't be. I don't know if bourbons can be sour mash. I don't really know that off the top of my head for certain. Could be the mash bill. Maybe there's not enough corn, so maybe the mash bill doesn't line up to where they can call it bourbon. Yeah, I mean, that's all just sweets, kind of caramelly toffee, a little bit of apple in there. You know, that crispness could almost be confused, and I put in my notes, hint of mint. It could almost be confused for like a little bit of a mint vibe. It almost kind of reminds me of the mint vibe you get in some ryes. The mash bill, I do not know on this. So maybe it's a little higher in the rye on the mash bill, which kind of gives it that little bit of a minty vibe sometimes. But I could go back and forth with what I'm smelling and tasting if it's a little bit of like a mintiness or if it's like a crisp, fresh, like Granny Smith apple kind of vibe. Smooth, kind of creamy butteriness to the texture. If somebody's new to whiskey and they can't palate this, you're probably not gonna find a whole lot that they do like because this is a pretty easy, approachable, good, easy drinking whiskey. I definitely think this would be a good entry point if you got a newbie coming to your house and you wanna get them turned on to whiskeys, especially drinking neat. I don't know that I would add water or ice to this one. I'm not against adding ice. I've made a video uh, on how to make clear ice for whiskey drinks on a hot day. Sometimes certain whiskeys and bourbons hold up really well to a, a nice big fat ice cube. 
This one is a little too thin for me to say add water or ice. It's already down in the 80s. It doesn't have smack you in the face flavor. It's good flavor, but it's not super strong. I think this is one that it would go flat if you add water or ice to it. Personally, that's just me though. Some people might like it a little watered down. I have heard a lot of people say they wish that they had this at barrel proof. And yes, it would be super interesting to taste this at barrel proof. Maybe we'll get lucky and uh, they'll come out with a barrel proof version of this. Retail on this, when you can get it, is usually, I believe, around 60-ish. I think I paid 70 or 75 for this bottle because it's not super easy to find, so I paid a little bit of a markup on it to get it, but I generally think if you can find it in stores, retails around 60 bucks. I mean, for 60 bucks, I think it's a damn good bottle. Are there other bottles out there for 60 bucks that I think are probably as good or better? Sure. I think it's really unique. I really enjoy toasted barrel stuff. Woodford Reserve Double Oaked is a double barrel in a toasted barrel kind of situation. 1910? Yeah, 1910. Old Fine Whiskey, I'm pretty sure, is a double, a double barrel, you know, second toasted barrel finish type whiskey, if I'm not mistaken. I really enjoy the character that gives to whiskey. So generally speaking, if there's a toasted barrel version of something, I'm gonna give it a recommend. It's a cool bottle. It's an annual release, so it's pretty limited. So cool one to have in your collection. And generally speaking, you can't go wrong with Michter's. So definitely gets a good old recommend for me. I would give this a B minus. B minus or B, depending on my mood. I think it's very good. I think the price is okay, but I do agree with a lot of people. It might be better at a slightly higher proof. I went on the bandwagon and agreed with everybody. <laughs> so that about wraps up the barrel portion of this guy. If you are interested, I will put a link down below. And at the end of this video, we're going to pair this guy up with a little something else in part two of this video. If you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and click on over. We'll see you in the next video. If you're not into that, I completely understand. I will bid you adieu here. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. I hope everybody is having a fantastic week and we will see you in the next video. Big thank you to the Patreons for voting on this and making that this week's feral portion of the Leaf and Barrel. Very good choice, guys. I'll tell you what, a very good one. I'm going to go even better with this guy right here. You know, I'm almost spoiled. Like, I've gotten to where it's hard for me to do the barrel portion because I don't have the leaf. It's tough. tough. I go through the struggle for you guys. That's how much I love you. <laughs>